Let's cover a little bit of vocabulary here, starting with this word. An integer is a whole number. It might be easier to describe an integer in terms of what it's not. An integer is a non-decimal number. So for instance, 1, 2, a billion, negative 7, and 0 are all integers. 1.5, negative 3.8, those are not integers. Then we move on to multiples and factors. And the easier way to understand these is usually with an example. So let me give you one here. Uh, let's take the number 10. Can you give me a factor of 10? Well, a factor is anything that divides evenly into 10. So for instance, uh, 5 would be a factor of 10, 2 would be a factor of 10, 1 would be a factor of 10, and on and on and on. A multiple of 10 is a number that I can obtain by multiplying 10 by something else. So for instance, 20, 30, 40, and so on. Long story short, multiples are larger and factors are smaller. 10, of course, is a multiple of itself. So anything to the left of this is a factor, anything to the right of this is a multiple, and 10 is both a multiple and a factor of itself. All right, let's get to it. I want you to try this question right here. Now, before you do, I wanna give you a little introduction into this. This is a GRE signature question type. It's called quantitative comparison. Now, we haven't seen this type of question yet, but we're going to do a deep dive on it in a later module. For now, I'm gonna give you a quick and dirty explanation. We have two quantities here, right? Two described quantities. Your job is to decide which quantity is bigger. Is quantity A greater than quantity B? Is quantity B greater than quantity A? Are the two quantities equal? Or is it impossible to determine with the information that we have? Pause the video right now and try this out on your own. All right, let's get to it. Quantity A wants us to find the number of distinct, that means different, positive factors of 18. So what are the positive factors of 18? Well, let's go from least to greatest. One is a factor of 18, and that is a factor of 18 with 18, right? So one and 18 are both factors of 18. Two is a factor of 18 with nine. Three is a factor of 18 with six. Is four, check your calculator, no. Five, no, six, well, we already got it, right? So if I count these up, one, two, three, four, five, six, these are all factors of 18. So there are six factors of 18. All right, quantity B wants to know the number of distinct prime factors of 105. Now we talked about prime numbers. Remember what prime numbers are and what they aren't. Now the best way to break down a number into its prime factorization is with a factor tree. Let me show you what I mean here. So here's 105, right? I'm gonna divide 105 by anything, literally anything. It doesn't matter as long as it comes out to an integer. So why don't I divide this by five and 21, again, using my calculator. Once I have a prime number, that's it, right? I can't break that down any further. Five is a prime number. Is 21 a prime number? No, that breaks into seven and three, which are each prime numbers. So I've reached the end of the tree here. It's important to note, and I invite you to do this, that if I had broken 105 down a different way, like uh, seven times 15, I would have still ended up with the same three numbers. So the number of distinct prime factors is three. This means that quantity A is greater. One important note, in case you're a little confused about this number tree business, we couldn't use a number tree here because quantity A was asking about all of the factors of 18, not just the prime factors. A number tree is great when you're looking for the individual prime factors of a number. Let's put our new knowledge to use here and try this question out. Go ahead and pause the video and give this a shot on your own. All right. J is an integer divisible by 15 and two. Which of the following must be true? Select all that apply. Now it's important to know that on these questions, the select all that apply questions, at least one answer must be true, but there could be more than one answer that's true. I really, really like this question because it's a good introduction to the logic of the test. And what we talk about here is gonna be applicable not just to quant, but also to the verbal sections. Okay. So let's take a look at this one. I wanna start by pointing out the most important word in this question. Do you know what it is? That must or must be true. What does it mean if something must be true? Well, what it means is that it cannot be false, right? 
So if I find one counterexample of this statement, then that answer option is out. If I can disprove one of these with one counterexample, then it's out. Let's start by testing out a number. And I'm, I'm guessing this is probably what you did on your own, right? We'll say, what could j be? j could be a number divisible by 15 and 2. Mm, how about 30? Did you pick 30? I bet you did. Great number to pick, right? So let's just say that j is 30, right? Is 6 a factor of j? Is 6 a factor of 30? Yeah, 6 goes into 30. So check there. Is 60 a multiple of j? Uh, can I get 60 by multiplying 30? Yeah, 30 times 2 makes 60. So that's also true. Is j divisible by 4? No, right? And so immediately, I just found an a case where this is false. Game over for that, for that answer option. And at this point, you might have selected these two. But I'm taking a dramatic pause here, so you probably know that's not correct. What you And it's, it's OK, right? What you did is you just tested one case, right? You said, oh, one case uh, is true for each of these. That means that they must always be true. That's not how the world works. Just, be, just because we find one case of something being true doesn't mean that it's always true in every single case. So let's go ahead and try a different number. What's another number that's divisible by 15 and 2? How about 60? Right? 60 is divisible by 15 and 2. Check your calculator if you don't believe me. Right? 60 is a number divisible by 16 and 2. Is, 60, is 6 a factor of 60? Yeah, it is. Is 60 a multiple of 60? Absolutely it is, right? 60 times 1 is 60. So again, two check marks. These are both true here. I've already eliminated this one, so I don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to encourage you to try one more case. Let's try one more number that J could be. How about 90? Aha. Is 6 a factor of 90? It is, according to our calculator. Is 60 a multiple of 90? It is not. And because I found one counterexample, it's out, right? And so as I said on these questions, at least one of them needs to be correct. That way, I know that this one is correct. OK, so let's debrief a little bit about this question. You might be looking at this and saying, well, how do I know when to stop testing? I mean, what if I kept testing and, and both of these kept being correct? In the next module in Algebra, we'll get into a, a little bit how to test and smart numbers to test. So we'll talk about that a little bit down the road. The other way that you could have solved it for you pure you know, math students out there is to look at these numbers, right? To look and say, OK, j is divisible by 15 and 2. So I'll say there's j, and there's 15, and there's 2. Well, if j is divisible by 15, and 15 is divisible by 3 and 5, Right? That means that j is divisible by 3. If j is divisible by 3 and by 2, that means that to get j, I would need to multiply 3 and 2, otherwise known as 6, together. So if that last part didn't make sense, don't sweat it. Testing, testing uh, examples is a great way to go about this that we will cover more in depth in the next chapter.